Good afternoon. We are Team Georgia Tech, and we are honored to present our analysis on Rock 10. We believe Rock 10 is a good company. However, our objective analysis reveals a self-recommendation in Rock 10 stock based on three points. One, declining demand in industry's paper packaging products. Number two, the company is a leveraged company highly dependent on a strong U.S. economic recovery. And three, Rock 10 has a large unfunded pension liability adversely impacting valuation. The company overview. Rock 10 is the number two producer of container board and corrugated packaging in North America. They are also the number two producer of clay coated recycle board and folding cartons. They are the number one waste paper collector for recycling operations. The company employs 26,000 employees operating in over 150 facilities predominantly in the United States and Canada. Rock 10 currently owns 20% market share of the paper packaging industry after acquiring Spurfit Stone, a company twice as large as Rock 10 in 2011. Stefan will now give you the industry overview. The paper packaging industry is dominated by four main companies, International Paper, Rock 10, Georgia Pacific, and the Packaging Corporation of America. They have currently have a 70% market share. Growth has recently mainly occurred through acquisitions with Rock 10 acquiring Smurfit Stone in 2011 and International Paper acquiring Temple Inland in 2012. The industry is strongly correlated to GDP and non durable output with 85% 85% of the end use segment coming from food and beverages and consumer non durables. These are highly influenced by company and consumers discretionary spending and with the uncertainty in today's market discretionary spending has tightened. This is a negative growth sign for Rock 10 and the industry as a whole. The industry consists of three main segments, corrugated packaging, consumer packaging, and recycling. Comparing Rock 10 and International Paper's first quarter results from 2013 to their first quarter results from 2012 shows a declining industry. Rock 10's container board shipments were down 0.84% during that time period. Meanwhile, International Paper saw a growth of 42%, largely due to the acquisition of Temple Inland. The packaging and recycling segment incomes were down 17.2% and 24%. International Paper saw declines of 17% and 3.7%. In 2010, Rock 10 was above the industry average in four key financial ratios, operating margin, gross margin, return on assets, and return on equity. However, in 2012, Rock 10 is now below the industry average in all four of these ratios, even as the industry average has declined. Brad will now discuss the pension analysis. A growing concern in corporate America is the accounting for underfunded pension plans on financial statements. The Pension Protection Act of 2006 was created by Congress to ensure companies with defined pension plans were fully funded. Those plans that were underfunded required the parent company to make special pension contributions in order to become fully funded. Those plans deemed at risk were expected to be 80% funded in 2011. At the end of fiscal year 2012, Rock 10 was only 70% funded. Rock 10 has a number of pension plans for its employees. Its largest by far is its defined pension plan. This plan has an unfunded status of $1.5 billion. In the coming years, Rock 10 plans to make significant contributions to bring the pension plan up to a fully funded status. The source of this funding will come from Rock 10's operational cash flow, or increased net borrowings, or some combination of the two. How big is Rock 10's pension liability? The pension benefit obligation, or PBO, is nearly as big as Rock 10's total market cap, $5 billion versus $6 billion. The pension shortfall represents 30% of the PBO, or 25% of total market cap. Fortunately, this liability is transparent and can be found on the balance sheet. How big are Rock 10's pension contributions in the coming years? In the next five years, we project net income to be $2.1 billion. We also project pension contributions to be $1.5 billion, or 70% of total net income. In 
in some years, pension contributions will be as high as 90% of net income. While the shortfall is transparent on the balance sheet, the risk mismatch between pension assets and pension liabilities is not transparent. The biggest problem facing corporate America and its investors is not the shortfall, but the pension risk mismatch between pension assets and pension liabilities. Pension liabilities behave like fixed income. However, most of Rock 10's pension assets are invested in equities, alternative investments, and their short-term securities. The returns on Rock 10's pension portfolio is, has been negative in four of the last five, 10 years, which reduced the asset portfolio value and increased the pension shortfall. This pension risk mismatch increases total investment risk in every share of Rock 10. I will now be followed by Fan, who will give the evaluation overview. This graph is the three valuation model we use. The first column is credible, the second is credible, so the third is not. The first method is the DCS model we use. It has an intrinsic value of 64. And after sensitivity analysis, the price range from 50 to 81. The second is the valuation model of multiple valuation of EV over EBITDA. It has an intrinsic value of 553, and its price range from 36 to 61. And in these two models, we take the underfunded pension accounts into consideration. We deduct the liability from its enterprise values. The third method is the PE ratio valuation. Because the earnings does not take any information of the pension account, so we do not think that's a suitable valuation model for Rock 10. And you could see that its price range is very deviated from the first two models. I will pass it to Jason to investment risks. Rock 10 faces three major risk factors. Product demand and price fluctuation, material and input price volatility, and the risks associated with the smurfed stone degradation process. Demand for container board is highly correlated to the consumer non-durable index and is therefore dependent on the robustness of the economy. Material, and input, material input and energy price volatility also pose these significant threats given the industry's inability to quickly react to adverse changes in price. Moreover, partial failure to, com to capture the complete synergies, the complete expected synergies from this metrics down acquisition could significantly impact valuation. The integration process has not been proceeding exactly smoothly, with production disruptions in major mills, and the management rolling over the complete integration time horizon by a full year. Brad will now close our presentation by summarizing our investment thesis. Our objective analysis points to a sell recommendation. While Rock 10 operates in an unattractive industry with falling demand. While Rock 10 may be a good company, it is a leveraged company dependent on a U.S. economic recovery. Future pension contributions and pension risk mismatch adversely impact valuation. The stock market has not yet fully appreciated Rock 10's pension risk in its stock price. It's currently trading 35% above its intrinsic value. We leave you with this analogy. A story about a company very similar to Rock 10. Like Rock 10, that company was the second largest company in its industry. Like Rock 10, that company was highly leveraged in a capital intensive industry. Like Rock 10, that company had a significantly large unfunded pension status. In 2009, that company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy due to high debt loans and declining demand for its products. That company was Smurfit Stone. And those same issues that led to Smurfit Stone's bankruptcy now belong to Rock 10. Thank you. Uh, since some of your can we go to the question? Yes. Since uh, some of your analysis was based on the pension plan, can we a little bit more about the pension plan? Is it still open or are um, liabilities increasing? Have greater longevity or they freeze the plan? They have frozen the plan for new employees. 
Okay, and um, over the course of your analysis, as you did your DCF, did you assume higher interest rates that rates might rise over time? Yes, we have, and that that would uh, that would decrease the pension obligation in the future, but it would also uh, decrease the returns on the portfolio value in terms of fixed income and also equities. You said the majority was in equities anyway. Did you not? Uh, most of it was a combination of equities, alternative investments, and short-term securities. We put the cell screen back up there. This one? Yeah. yeah. Hey, who, 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 who do they sell to? Number one, demand for paper packaging products is falling. Who, falling. Who, who, who buys their stuff? So a lot of the industry is bought by for consumer packaging. I mean, what, what, what's the name of a company that they sell to? Uh, one of them would be Revlon because they do okay. their packaging for. That's the consumer side. How about the corrugated side? Uh, Who are their customers? That I don't know. Okay, so you don't wouldn't know if any one company buying ten percent of their output. Or we do know that. We do know that. That ten yeah. percent okay. of their sales are to two or three main large and customers. Who are those? We do not know the names of those. Okay. You think that'd be important? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Knowing those if those companies are declining. But, but isn't isn't all this internet shopping that all of us are supposedly doing, which is why Amazon sells at 200 times earnings, creating need for lots and lots of cardboard boxes? I mean, isn't just, instead of somebody going to the grocery the store and buying something that comes in a paper sack now now it's delivered to your doorstep in a big box? Wouldn't that increase the demand for packaging? It would, but the overall discretionary spending is being restricted because of the economy. People are not buying uh, as much as they have during a growing economy. So are you thinking GDP is decreasing? We, 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 we do not have a long-term uh, favorable outlook on GDP. Is it higher or lower than it was last year? Do you think it'll be higher or lower than it was last year? I think it'll be about the same. Um, I've been interested in the slide that you showed very early on in your presentation showing some of the financial metrics of uh, Rock 10 relative to its industry. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we could go back to look at that, but I'd be interested in hearing a few more comments on, on what was driving some of that. So, for example, right off yep. the top of my head, return on equity, you know, here they leveraged up to do this deal, and maybe it's a timing question. They leveraged up to do the deal, and yet their return on equity went from 8, uh, 25% to 7%. So a lot of that has to do with acquiring Smurf who is below so the industry. So why would you acquire something that drove your returns down so much when you levered up so much to do it? That's one of the reasons we propose to sell is that we don't see that <laughs> synergizing. Okay, do you think <laughs> like you don't like the, the management is that there will be 500 million of synergies or so. You don't buy that or do you? Or is part of the reason the ROE is down is just because yeah, they were a less profitable business and so you don't buy that we, we think most out. of the, the capturing of those synergies will be postponed to the right. Uh, we probably don't think that they will attain every dollar, so most of that uh, synergies will be captured in later years. Uh, so the, the, the profitability of this industry appears, at least in the last couple of years, and maybe it's secular, maybe it's cyclical, if you could address that. But the return on assets has gone from 6.5% to 3.8%, and... Rock 10 has gone from 8 to 2. This doesn't strike me as being a particularly profitable business to be in. So why would Rock 10 want to make this huge acquisition to expand in an industry that's profitability is deteriorating? I think they saw a lot of CEO wants to invest the bucks. <laughs> is it just because they wanted to be bigger? But answer yeah. the question. Um, I think a lot of that was before the acquisition. They were a majority consumer packaging, which is showing even bigger declines than the corrugated packaging. So I think they saw an opportunity to increase their corrugated packaging, which is a more consistent industry and not as and not as highly uh, flexible as the consumer packaging. Is it more profitable? Uh, it is. No, it has tighter margins than the consumer packaging. So it volume-wise, they'll be more profitable, but consumer packaging is where they get most of the. How, how many market. shares are outstanding? They have seventy-one point one two million. How much is it float on? You know. Uh, about 600000 Is it easily available to a short? Uh, I'm sure. Should I short it? Yes. Yeah. 
So you want me to leverage the short stock that's because I want to make profit. Where should I cover it at? 61? 61 is a good number. I shouldn't answer for you, should I? <laughs> <laughs> Did any of their competitors bid on, on, on this big acquisition coming out of bankruptcy? We don't know the history of, of prior to the acquisition. I think it was fairly close to International Papers acquisition of Temple Inland, which was fairly similar to this. So I don't, I wouldn't believe they would have been in the market for Smurf at Stone as well. What can go wrong with your analysis? I mean, what, what, what can make a stock go to 103 or 104 dollars a share? The U.S. economy recovers at a rebounding rate. At what rate? rate? Uh, greater than four. Greater than four and a half. It's going to take four and a half percent GDP growth before the stocks go. Year over year. Nominal or real? Nominal or real? It's uh, nominal. 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 Is there any, uh, what else can go wrong? That's consensus. Go, wrong. Real. Yeah. go, I mean, go wrong, not, what? not with, I mean, go wrong to where the stock price goes higher, because if I short this thing, I sure don't want it to go higher, right? Correct. So what else is wrong with your analysis? Are you going to short it? Why not? Well, what's the short interest rate? Well, see, uh, the, he said it's easy to short the stock, so. Take it. I think, no, I'm taking his word for it. And since I'm not willing to trust to manage $100 billion, I don't have to worry about it. 60, 60, okay, 60 billion. You know, I, I can short my shares and not be worried. So. so tell me what's going wrong. I think if they realize all the synergies with Smurf Pitstone, they how much have they how much have they how much have they realized so far? So far three hundred million. And what's their target? Five hundred and fifty. And what's to stop them from reaching that five hundred million in the next year or two? We just don't see the economy recovering enough that they can. It should take the economy to recover. Are you guys investment analysts or economists? <laughs> Neither. Well, it just sounds like it sounds like Students? your economic your economic forecast is playing a very large role in your valuation of the company, and I think that's sort of what he's getting at. Is. What are the 12, 13, and fourteen EPSs? Earnings per share. Right. For 2013-14, <laughs> uh, around five, five, between five and six. I can't remember anything there. So, well, and for 12, is it growing or shrinking? 13, uh, 12, 13 to 14. Uh, it's shrinking. So even with they can extract perhaps some more costs, they're going to lose more money. Yeah. Or not make, make as much money. Uh, the economy is growing. You're really sort of forecasting that whereas the economy is growing and we have higher GDP, you're really thinking we're going into some sort of recession. We, we don't think it's going to grow at a higher rate than 2%. We think that the earnings that they earn are going to be um, marginalized by the amounts that they have to pay in the early years for pension contributions. We believe that Rock 10 is a good company. However, the amount of money that they have to put forward in outlays tells us that the stock is not worth $80 a share today. What, what lumber cost? I mean, just wood, wood cost? You know, is that one of their primary yes, it's expenses? Are they in competition with the construction industry at all? or they got, they, Do they own any of their timber? No. Just one minute. Are they able to pass through <laughs> energy price and other commodity price increases onto the uh, customer, or do they have to absorb them? They have to <laughs> absorb import costs for fuel oil and uh, natural gas. So one of their big projects is moving a couple, uh, four of their plants currently from fuel oil to natural gas to try and hedge against some of those volatility in prices and uh, to move into the cheaper natural gas. So your recommendation to me is to sell it, and if I don't own it today, sell it short. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yep. And if I lose money, who do I come and talk to? <laughs> the CFA Institute. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. In your, in your um, analysis of the valuation of stock, which leads to your conclusion about um, not buying it, let's, let's just leave it at not buying it. Um, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.